bad damage that we've come across, and we've had to traverse all the way back along I-40 down to Mustang and all the way over to Tuttle to even get to this point due to traffic and the uh, jam of uh, people trying to just get to and from places for, uh, you know, general purposes and, and even trying to get home if they even have a home left. Uh, as a sport tracker, it's, uh, it's a disheartening situation going on more. I, I really feel for the city. And, uh, and uh, you know, to the crews that are working with the I'm Go ahead. In a, in a very Pot his audio down. Uh, Mark, your, 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 your audio's really up and down there, all the modulation from all the traffic on cell phones. But Mark is in Newcastle. This is where it first set down, about 150 yards wide is what he said. It set down fairly small but intense and then went to large and violent. That was the progression of this tornado. But this is very close to where it originally set down between here and Bridge Creek, a little further back to the southwest. Uh, Kevin and Linda, again, there is a severe storm in eastern Oklahoma County, but the hail size is down to Diamond Nichols. It is not tornadic. There's no tornado warning anywhere near Oklahoma City. It is dry and more and will stay dry down there, but by about sunrise, there may be a shield of rain coming up, and I'll keep looking at the latest data to see whether or not that is or is not going to happen for the folks who are down in more. Okay, there's their one. They're going to want to know, and we know you'll let right. them. Thank you. And of course, as the hours go by, the chance of finding survivors in the debris lessens. If you were with us about 12 minutes ago, Lance West reported that authorities on the scene at Plaza Towers Elementary have confirmed the deaths of seven small children in that school. They had sheltered in place as the twister approached more and did not survive. Unfortunately, Lance says they could expect to find as many as 30 more bodies. Pray for those parents. Um, let's go to Sarah Stewart. Sarah has also been covering, I'm sorry, Sarah Selly is now on the scene of the Plaza Towers Elementary. Sarah, uh, tell us what you're finding out. Well, good evening to you, Kevin and Linda. And you know, I'm coming to you for the first time because it took me about two hours to get here. I had to walk on foot and basically do anything I could possibly do to try to get here along with Shauna, my photographer. She and I uh, basically traversed a 15 or 16 mile block period uh, of just area, just devastation. Um, along the way, we've talked to a lot of folks and we did speak with two students and their families, two of the students who were at Plasma Towers when this all happened. Um, we spoke to a six-year-old who was in the, in the first grade and we spoke with a fifth grader, uh, both girls. Um, and both of those children told me that uh, they huddled in the bathroom, in the girls' bathroom. They were taken there by their teachers. That was where they were expected to go for a tornado. They sheltered there. Um, both of these kids uh, described a horrific situation. They said they gathered together as a small group um, with their teacher, uh, kind of huddled as tight as they possibly could. Uh, they heard the storm coming, knew the storm was coming, uh, didn't necessarily know how bad it would be. The teachers were trying to keep the kids calm. Um, and then it just kind of rolled over them and it just caused this complete chaos that we've been discussing uh, for the last several hours here. Um, both of these kids, unfortunately, um, you know, it's such a bad double whammy for these kids because their parents rushed to find them. They got out safely, but then they walk three or four blocks to their home and they don't have a home to go to. Mm -hmm. So not only are we talking about survivors that have to deal with their homes being gone, but they also were in the school at the time. So they've been through a horrific situation, a horrible situation for any child, both of these kids, um, but they wanted to talk about it. When we uh, approached their parents, we kind of tried to stay back and say, you know, if you, it's been too much, you don't have to talk about it. But both of these kids wanted to talk and they said it was just a awful situation. But they both told me that the teachers that they were with um, were completely heroic in this situation. They got the kids, they tried to stay calm, they did what they could, um, and they tried to save and shelter as many children as they possibly could. Unfortunately for some of those kids, uh, this was gonna be their last few moments on, on earth. But for those children that we spoke to, they were very um, appreciative and complimentary of what the teachers had done and, and the way the staff reacted. Sarah, we're getting information here as you're speaking, so I may have missed this. Did those teachers survive? From what I understand, some of the teachers did survive, um, and the, ch the children that I spoke to indicated that the teachers had survived. They said the teachers helped to get them out. They had to kind of climb over the debris and climb over each other, but they uh, managed to, to at least get them out and pull them out. So um, that was some good news. Uh, the kids were just dazed. I mean, they were just shocked, and they didn't have any 
real grasp of what had happened, except to keep saying both of them over and over again that they just couldn't believe it, that it was the scariest thing they'd ever seen or ever experienced. And, and these kids were both, both of the kids were crying. So, um, but that does tell you though, that there were some very heroic and good acts that happened in the last few minutes at this school, that the school had a plan. They tried to do something. Um, they took the best route that they knew how, and they tried to shelter the kids. It just didn't work out for some of these children. Well, they did all they could. Heroic efforts for for them, Sarah, as you said, and we had reports of uh, some some hanging onto the wall as that the wind and that tornado rushed through that elementary school. Not and, much uh, you can hang on to not, when not an F5 really, goes through. Not really. And, the t and uh, <clears throat> kudos to the teachers for doing all they could. We have some new information on another little one. We do. St. Anthony's Health East is asking us to alert you to the fact they're trying to find Jose and Sandra Rodriguez. They believe they have your daughter there at their facility. She is described as a nine-year-old female. They think she's your daughter. We hope this is great news for you. We hope that your daughter is well, but they need you to contact them immediately. St. Anthony's Health East trying to find Jose and Sandra Rodriguez. And also we know at the uh, Norman Regional Health Plex mm -hmm. that is down on Tecumseh uh, Road in Norman that they were searching for the parents of Kaylee Hawkins, a little nine-year-old who was brought in to be treated from a tornado wound and from more, and they're looking for the parents or family members of Kaylee Hawkins at the Norman Regional Health Plex down there on Tecumseh. We also want to go back to uh, John Welsh and Bob Moore Chopper Forum. He has been in the air for going on what, five or six hours now, John, and the, the coverage you gave us as that storm moved into more undoubtedly saved lives. We wish it could have saved every life. John, are you with us? He might be talking he, he to might, air traffic control. He's got right a now. lot. He's got a lot to. Go. There yeah. you go, John. How about now? Go ahead, John. Okay, yeah. Hey, real quick, yeah. We've uh, we took off about 10:30, shoot some damage, and uh, so I've only got out one time, real quickly, to use the to bathroom. But uh, we're back here. Um, as we're kind of backed out of this out of this school here, this is the Plaza Towers. You can see the two big excavators that they brought in uh, to kind of help expedite the process. Uh, there's a couple fire trucks here with some lights, and uh, we do have a portable generator that also has uh, lights on it as well. That you can see it right there in the uh, right of your screen if you take a look at that. Um, so they are set up here to continue this uh, recovery effort here at the uh, the uh, school here. Um, we have multiple fire crews. They're continuing to increase. I'm seeing more people and more people. Uh, every lap we take, um, just a, a devastating story here. Uh, you know, for all these people that had kids here, you can still see they have the gang line wrapped up. They're still uh, trying to expedite the process of moving that debris out as much as we can. Um, but the uh, roadways throughout Moore are still very congested. Um, I see a lot of police cars and a lot of uh, ambulances still running around. Uh, one thing to me when we're doing these live reports with guys on the ground, I can still hear sirens in the background. So it definitely, you know, is very eerie right now as the sun starts to set. It's throwing some different shadows. You can see the different, the definite texture of the ground where the uh, tornado came through. It kind of changes the color tones. Um, you have some definite, I mean, it's like sod is completely just ripped up from the ground, from the track from Newcastle here to, uh, to Moore as we you know, show you these shots of the school here. But if we kind of back out a little bit, we'll kind of give you some of the neighborhood um, and you can just see the destruction. Uh, we'll back out and then Travis will pan to the right. And it's completely destroyed. I mean, foundation, that's it. Foundation, a little bit of rubble on top of your foundation and you're gone. You know, as Ali said earlier, people by the thousands were walking to the north and I don't know where you would go. I don't know where I would go if my family was displaced uh, by this. So. It's going to be definitely a, a, a process throughout the night, and uh, let's hope that they can get these uh, recovery efforts taking place and uh, get every as much as we can get done in the next hour and a half. Because after that, it's going to it's going to be a crawl. Oh, John, and, the, and the anguish of those poor parents waiting. We have reported that, <clears throat> that nine children. I'm sorry, seven children have uh, reportedly perished in that school. They are looking for as many as 30 more children who may be in that school. We have been focusing on th that particular school because of the emotional tragedy of this whole situation. But the fact of the matter is there have been Zoom fatalities 
elsewhere around the Moore area. And in fact, there are search and rescue efforts going on in a 30 square mile area right, right now. Mm -hmm. Do you see any other area, John, that has as much activity as that elementary school? You might not be they able have to hear lost us. Him. John? Yeah, say again, Linda. I'm sorry. Do you it's, it's, we've got been, a lot of traffic up here. I understand you're doing a great job. We're focused on the elementary school, but as you see from your vantage point in the air, are there any other areas of Moore which had approximately 30 square miles of devastation with as much activity as there at, Park, at Plaza Towers Elementary? No, Linda, if you'll go, uh, we'll kind of back out and I'll pan, I'll show you the next highest area. It's gonna be in a neighborhood, it's gonna be south, or I'm sorry, it's gonna be west of uh, 19th Street in Santa Fe. I see uh, we've got two um, of those portable light generators as Travis will keep pan to the left. Let me get him on track. Keep going to your left, Travis. And keep coming to your left. And the top of your screen right there, pan up. And zoom in right there on that intersection on the left part of the screen if you'll slide to the left. Perfect, right there. Uh, th this, this is another area that uh, has a high level of concentration of emergency efforts here. We've got several light sets set up here, a lot of ambulance and police, and as you can see, some stuff taped off. Um, this is that uh, other school, and I believe it's the Broadmoor Elementary School right here, which is just gonna be uh, on the north side of 149th. It's gonna be the east side of Penn. Um, so this is another area that there's a high level of activity at. We're run for sure at this time if there's as many people that might be trapped in there like uh, with the Plaza Towers Elementary School. But again, Linda, both of these are less than a mile apart. Mm -hmm. uh, John, is, so it, is it possible? Devastating news for these people. It could be Briarwood. Is that Briarwood School? Could that be I'm possible? Sorry, Bri yes, Briarwood. I'm sorry. Right. I misspoke. No, that's all right. You'd, we just want to be clear. But keep in mind, John lives not far from this devastation. In fact, if you're just now joining us, uh, here at just a little bit after the seven o'clock hour, uh, John had to call his family and make sure they were in their safe room because it went just a few blocks from his house. And we're gonna be checking back with John here in just a little bit. We wanna to go to Meg Alexander. Meg was on the scene of a tragic situation today. Workers trying frantically to rescue a mother and a baby and others trapped in some rubble there. She's joining us now live with more on what's happening and where she is right now. Meg. I'm still down here by the Moore Medical Building and we're watching volunteers go to work now and you're gonna see if you're anywhere in this area, a lot of people walking around with these uh, spray paint can cans, these volunteers and what they're doing, if you can see the cars here in this hard hit area, they're going through to see if bodies are in the car. If the cars are clear, they're putting the, the orange X's on them and they're checking one by one, they're checking underneath cars, checking between cars, uh, under debris that is around the cars. Again, these are volunteers just going through. You can see them all just walking and kind of doing some uh, gritty work. And so far though, they have said they have not found anyone in this parking lot. As we're getting a little closer to some of the damage, I don't know if you can see what hit here. This is again, the Moore Medical Building. You see this is just gone, but look up here. There, is, there are pieces of board just stuck in the side of the wall here from the debris over here. There's actually a hood of a car that went right through there. It's stuck to the wall, just shows the force. This is a medical building. So as we're walking through, we're finding all sorts of things. There are medical scanners, medical computers. I told you people have been looting. And you know, it's because there are a lot of uh, expensive things in a medical building, but we are just finding, you know, electrical boards, all this type of thing all over here. You really have to be careful. Another thing that we are starting to come upon here, people bringing us pictures. Pictures are being found everywhere. And I know in the past we've had a system where somebody took charge of that and there was a place you could bring your pictures. I don't know if we have that yet, but I do know that I've been taking them and, and uh, you know, if, if there is someone at the command center, I think they may take them as well. But people are coming up with a lot of keepsakes and things like this. So hopefully we'll have more information on what to do with this type of thing. Okay. I'm Meg, Meg Alexander reporting live Meg, if here you can near hear the me. Warren Theater. Let's go Meg, back to you guys. Meg, can I ask you two questions? Can you still hear me? She may not be able to. Meg, can you still hear? She may be incommunicado right now. But area with millions of knives 
uh, being drawn to you as this twister moves around and sends the debris through the air, whether it's wood or metal or small bits of whatever may be in the storm. Mm. That's where many of the injuries are coming There's so from. so much tonight. power behind those boards, as you Unbelievable. said. Unbelievable. And Meg talked about uh, some looting there, which is extremely rare for Oklahoma. But we did hear when we talked to Governor Mary Fallon, National Guard has been called in, and they will cordon off that area. And uh, as you might have seen sometimes on a Facebook post or whatever, you loot, they shoot. So, uh, you know, they're going to be out there, and they're going to be very serious about this. Now, we're uh, Irish. Jesse Wells. Jesse Wells. Jesse, you, you've been reporting from several different areas. Tell us where you are first and what you're seeing. Again, we're here at the intersection of uh, 11th and Eagle. Again, right in front of the pool here behind me, as well as maybe 20 or 30 more that they continue to search from. I'll step out of the camera here and Joe will be able to zoom in. And again, the, su the schools here suffered a direct hit. You can see on the backside, potentially, they've set up a, a light. So you can see on the backside of that school, that's really where they're focusing their search operations at this point, trying to dig down. They thought those kids may be uh, in a basement type of area. Right now, what we're seeing, hopefully we have uh, some sound queued up for you here of one of the kids that was inside the school. Take a listen. I had to hold on to the wall to keep myself safe because I didn't want to fly away in the tornado. We had to pull a car out of the front hallway off a teacher and she, I don't we also talked to some uh, 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 fathers uh, who said that he had kids inside this school as well and his home was completely destroyed. Maybe we can play that sound as well. Now it appears we may be having some technical issues. It appears confirmed inside this school and the search and rescue operations continue. Back to Jesse, you guys. And we saw the National Guard beginning to filter in there to help with all of that and to keep those out who could be troublesome at this point. We hope none of no so fast. You, you know, you, you know, you hear that statement, you know, a lot, don't you, about worst case scenario. But Kevin and Linda, as you know, uh, and, and, it, and it is an actual very correct statement. It was truly the worst case scenario because this F5 formed from nothing to an F5 in an hour and it set down just to the southwest of Moore, hit Newcastle and came right into Moore. And the state medical examiner's office now is confirming 37 fatalities as of right now, which makes it more deadly than the tornado that hit Bridge Creek and more in May on May 3rd of 1999, which killed 36 individuals. This one now from the medical examiner's office, the official total now from the Associated Press is now 37 from this particular tornado as of right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the official warnings that we have. There are still quite a few severe and tornadic storms. They are out of the K4 viewing area, but there are four storms down here which do have tornado warnings on them south of McAllister. You folks in McAllister do get us on cable south of you right now. Important to make that out south of you and pushing to the east so it'll miss McAllister. Let's go to the storm tracker and uh, here is the activity. Uh, tornado warn now for Lake Texoma, uh, south of Tishomingo and Marshall County. Tornado warning southwest of Atoka. That'll go near Atoka or just south of Atoka and a large tornado appears likely with this storm in far southern Pittsburgh County. That's going to go into the mountains of the Talamina Drive and obviously a dangerous situation. Here it is almost sunset in the mountains and the trees and the hills of southeastern Oklahoma with really some vicious storms in that part of our state. This storm is weakened completely and is no longer severe as it dumped the hail over there in Nichols Hills. Now it is gone and no rain or storms are approaching the metro right now. But Kevin and Linda later at about sunrise, there may be a shield of rain coming up from the south, which would impact the Moore area. Back to you. Sure would not help, that's for sure. All right, Mike, thank you. A lot of groups coming to help the people in Moore and the, and the uh, search and rescuers as well. Feed the children among those. Aaron Engelke joins us, excuse me, joins us right now. What are you doing and how can we help? Yeah, Linda, you know, Feed the Children is based here in Oklahoma City and anytime something like this happens, to us right in our own backyard. We're just armed and ready to help. And so one of the things that we're doing is um, partnering with other organizations locally to provide immediate relief supplies and also providing folks the opportunity to bring donations to one of our warehouses here in Oklahoma City. Um, so from 8.30 to 4.30 tomorrow, 
We'll be accepting donations of diapers, canned goods, non-perishable food and snack items, water, and sports drinks. Aaron? Uh, yeah. Uh, excuse me, Kevin Ogle with you. What What is that location? The location is 29 North McCormick. It's our McCormick Distribution Center near I-40 and Meridian. Okay. Now, you already have a warehouses full of supplies, and those you'll start delivering now? Yeah, we've actually started delivering as of today. We've been partnering um, with the Salvation Army and the Red Cross to provide pallets of water and um, several donations of frozen lasagna for groups that need to provide sure. meals on site. All right, Aaron, and uh, that's good news to all those who, who need that kind of assistance for sure. And are you guys going to be, uh, of course, it's hard to get down there, and they don't want anybody down there but rescuers right now. But right. Will, will you all be in that area in the next few days with we food will and indeed. things like that? Yes, okay. we will. Just as soon as we get all the donations pulled together, we'll be, you know, arming all of our trucks and, and providing the relief that, you know, all the victims need. Aaron Engelke, go ahead, Linda, if you have another question. No, thank you very much for your help, Aaron. We thank do appreciate you. you. Thanks so much. If you're just joining us, 37 now confirmed dead in the twister that hit Moore, Oklahoma earlier this afternoon. Uh, search and rescue teams continue to look in some areas. What you're seeing right now is the Plaza, uh, Towers. Plaza Towers Elementary School, where as many as 30 children may still be in that debris. There have been seven confirmed fatalities of our young people. And as Jesse Wells said so well, it's the emotional center, epicenter of this tragedy right now because of those little ones and the parents who sent their kids to school today thinking they'll be back home. And uh, that's what they're having to deal with this evening. And we're being told by Lance West that there is a central area where the parents are being uh, gathering and, and emergency officials are going to keep them updated on what is now unfortunately, tragically, a search and recovery effort, not a search and rescue effort. Also, a second elementary school was as well destroyed, Briarwood Elementary. It's on, it's a few blocks from this location. John Welsh has shown you that scene from Chopper 4. It's the, there are two scenes that are being lit as, as these efforts continue tonight, and they are the two schools. Uh, one, of course, Briarwood, and the other one where you're looking right now. Mm -hmm. Now, you have been sending in many of the photographs you took as this storm moved into your area, and we're just going to run through some of those right now. We appreciate your input, and we appreciate the pictures. You can see, even as this storm moves towards us, and I don't know that these are any chronological order, but it went from a small storm to an F5 in less than an hour. It got huge in just a matter of minutes, as Mike was talking about a little while ago, a worst case scenario for these kind of storms to form. And they said, look well, at that. Well, that look gives at, you a better idea of it. Look at that. Because Mike said at one point it was two and a quarter miles wide in terms of debris uh, and winds. And there you see it coming it's south of Indian Hills Road, 935. 935 so right. that's still coming up towards more. Oklahoma. That is. It hasn't but there was some the talk, Kevin, and you could see it in that other picture that there might have been two tornadoes there. They're almost like you saw two funnels for exactly. a while. Exactly. And there you see some more. This from uh, Joy Menez uh, and uh, more of the debris that was scattered about. This is from Jonathan Carter. We don't know exactly where this is. We're presuming it's more Oklahoma. And uh, I think we're looking at water there that's building up. Of course, it came with a lot of rain. That's typical of what we're seeing in more Oklahoma tonight. Just rubble. 30 square miles of devastation. And you see the smoke, well, there's a shot of that tornado. Yeah. There's a picture of it, and whoever took that, I'm sure, dove into the uh, safe room right after they snapped that, but that's, uh, that's, the, that's the monster that uh, visited Oklahoma today. For those of you not familiar with our Oklahoma history, we had a very similar storm move through this same area, May 3rd, 1999. Again, it was a killer of a tornado, just as today's is. We have now 37 confirmed fatalities here in Oklahoma. But after that storm moved through, a lot of the folks chose to rebuild on their rebuild on their old lots. But the difference they made is they put in a storm shelter. Right. We're hopeful that keeps the numbers of fatalities down. We did a story with a lady who wanted to stay there and put in a safe room, and we hope she was in there today. Let's go to Sarah Stewart, who is also covering a portion of this disaster for us here in Oklahoma. Sarah. Yeah, guys, you're talking about just the monster of the storm here. We're here in the parking lot 
um, the Moore Medical Center, um, where there's just total devastation, debris everywhere. And I know Meg showed you some of the two by fours sticking into the building earlier. I'm going to take a step out of the way here and look back over there at all of those cars just tossed up on top of each other. Uh, you can see they're just smashed, just thrown around like little toy cars, really. And you can just see the total destruction um, on the back side here. We're on the west side of the Moore Medical